2021, Lily Sullivan was 18 years old. She had been attending college, met new friends, started driving lessons, and recently started going out with them to clubs and pubs. On 16 December 2021, she was out at a club with some friends, where she met a man. They hit it off and hung out for the rest of the night. Lily's mom was said to pick her up at around 3 a.m. in the morning of the 17th. She waited for Lily at a nearby garage as they had discussed only a few minutes earlier. But Lily, sadly, never showed up. Lily Sullivan was the only child to her mother, Anna Sullivan, who had suffered 14 miscarriages before Lily was born. Lily grew up and still lived in Lanelli, Wales. In 2021, Lily had just turned 18. She had recently started attending a college and was also working part-time at a supermarket. Her mother described her as a beautiful girl, inside and out, although she didn't always know it, who always saw the best in people. Others described her as a very sweet and caring young woman who was well-spoken and very mature for her age. Lily was a talented artist. She loved tattoos and she loved house music. Lily started going out to clubs and pubs with her friends after she turned 18, which is legal drinking age in Wales. And on the 16th of December, they went to a Christmas event at Out Nightclub, formerly known as Paddles in Pembroke. Whilst there, she met 31-year-old Lewis Haynes, who was also out with friends for the night. He was a well-known cricket player in the area who liked to party and celebrate the wins. Throughout the night, Lewis had shown sexual interest in Lily and was warned off by friends more than once. You see, Lewis had a girlfriend waiting for him at home and a daughter that he was currently fighting for custody for in family court. His friends also pointed out that Lily had told them that she was only 18 years old. She was of legal age, but still, there was a big age difference between 18 and 21. But it seemed that he did not want to listen. Lily and Lewis were seen kissing in the club at a certain point. They also made their exit together at around 2 o'clock in the morning, with his friend shouting a reminder to him, You have a girlfriend and a baby at home and she is only 18. Haynes led Sullivan to an unlit secluded alley close to the club. This alley opened up to the Pembrokeshire Mill Pond that was close to Pembroke Castle. In this alley, things got a little more intimate. Anna Sullivan, Lily's mom, was set to pick her up at around 3 a.m. and was waiting for her at a nearby garage. She called Lily at 2.47 a.m and they spoke on the phone with Lily saying, I'll be there now, ma'am. I'm on my way. I'm a couple of minutes away. I'm nearly there. This is when it is assumed she stopped things from going any further, and the attack on her began. Lewis was upset because he wanted things to go further, and Lily was making plans with her mom to pick her up, which meant his plans were stopped dead in their tracks. Lily was still speaking to her mom, as the phone suddenly went dead. Lewis did not want to let her go, which is when he stated she told him she would tell everyone that he tried to violate her. This was something he couldn't allow. He had a girlfriend at home and he would never get any custody of his daughter if she told people that. And this is when he strangled Lily in the alleyway. At about the same time that Lily's school with her mother abruptly ended, someone who lived nearby heard a woman scream. Anna also tried to call her daughter back 30 times, but there was no answer. Granny CCTV footage of the alley showed Lily's phone lighting up repeatedly as her mother tried to contact her. After strangling Lily, Lewis dumped her body in Mill Pond and fled the scene. He's seen on CCTV footage running across the bridge. Anna 
was seen on CCTV waiting for Lily in her car at the prearranged garage parking lot. Lewis was captured on that same CCTV, walking past Lily's mom in her car. Lewis is seen walking past Anna at 3.10 a.m., looking back at her. He looked her straight in the eyes and then started acting strangely, shaking his head and holding his head in his hands. She looked at him as he was walking and followed the path that he was taking because she saw that he was acting strangely. But she lost sight of him as he disappeared into the woods. Anna had no idea that the person she was just looking at was her daughter's killer. Police were initially called to the Mill Pond area at 4.12 a.m. on December 17, 2021, after receiving reports of a female body in the water. The coroner officer said that despite resuscitation attempts, Lily was pronounced dead at 6.02 a.m. Lily was found naked from the waist up. A cream lace top was found next to the water and her brown leather jacket and phone were found in the alley nearby. Lewis had gone home to tell his girlfriend, I have strangled somebody. They are in the mill pond. I've been in the mill pond. He then also told his mum and stepdad about how he met Lily in Out Nightclub before they necked and how he strangled her. The police soon after arrived to his mum's address where he was staying and he immediately told them, I strangled her and he was taken into custody. Later, while at the custody desk, he said, What the F have I done? Lewis Haynes was charged with Lily Sullivan's death on 20 December 2021. Lewis first appeared in court on 23 December 2021 and was remanded in custody and set to appear in court again on 14 January 2022. On that same day, Lily's family released a heartbreaking tribute in which they said, Lily was a kind and caring daughter who will be deeply missed by everyone. The family are very thankful to all of Lily's friends for their support. Haynes pleaded guilty to manslaughter and not murder in May of 2022 and was due to stand trial for murder on 20 June. However, he changed his plea to guilty on the charge of murder on the 13th of June, due to the overwhelming strength of the evidence presented against him. He appeared in Swansea Crown Court for sentencing on 7 July. It was stated that the Crown prosecution requested a minimum sentence of 30 years, while the defence requested a minimum sentence of 15 years. Court, however, was adjourned after new evidence was presented that there was a sexual element to Lily's murder. The Crown stated that when she was found, the state of undress indicated that a sexual element had been involved prior to her murder. The judge apologised to Lily's family for the unprecedented turn of events and having to postpone the sentencing and stated, I'm terribly sorry that we can't deal with this today. It must be terribly frustrating to all of you, having psyched yourselves up simply to find that we can't go to sentence today. I am sorry, but the most important thing here is to make the sentence right. So with my real apologies, we will try to find a date that's acceptable. The sentencing trial had been postponed to August of 2022. During his trial, Lewis had admitted to strangling Lily but said that it was not sexually motivated. He also stated that he had gone into the pond to try and save her. He claimed that he launched the attack after Lily had threatened to accuse him of aring her when she found out that he had a girlfriend, and also said that his young daughter would be ashamed of him. Lily's mother, Anna Sullivan, during her victim impact statement, said that she wished she could go back in time and stop Anna from going out that night. She said, I wish I could have protected her from the evil she made that night. She has been robbed of her future. She also stated that the events of the night played out in her mind constantly. I wake up in the night picturing Lily in the water and wondering if she knew what was happening 
and if she was scared. It's like being tortured thinking just one decision could have changed the whole night. Anna also described seeing Lewis as she was waiting for Lily in her car, saying, He looked me straight in the eye, knowing what he had done. She stated that she was haunted by the idea she could have got out and found Lily. Maybe I could have saved my girl. She was trying to get back to me. She needed me. She was in trouble. Anna said that she now suffered from panic attacks and was no longer afraid of dying because it would mean that she could be with her daughter. She said that Lily's grandfather, who absolutely adored her, had suffered from dementia and that she constantly has to explain to him why his granddaughter was not there, which was like causing a fresh cut every day. After all statements were made, the judge was ready to sentence Lewis. He stated, Lily, of course, tragically, cannot give evidence about what happened in that lane during that period. And Lewis Haynes has chosen, as is his right, not to give evidence at the hearing. I'm sure a degree of intimacy occurred in the lane. I'm equally sure it did not progress to sexual intercourse or anything close to it. I'm sure that did not happen because Lily did not want that to happen. She made it clear from the phone call, if nothing else, to her mother that she did not want the intimacy between her and Lewis Haynes to go as far as sexual intercourse. Lily decided that she was going home to meet her mother. Fueled as he was by drink, I am sure that Lewis Haynes was frustrated by this because he had expectations and hopes that it would go further. And his account of her threatening to tell people what he had done to her does in fact have an element based in truth about it. The court then heard that Haynes had a great deal to lose because he was in a relationship and had a daughter that he was currently in custody court over and that he had wanted to silence Lily. It was also proven that Lewis struck Lily several times with significant force and he then strangled her to death before putting her face down in Mill Pond where she would not be easily seen at night in the murky water. The judge then stated, I do not accept that he went into the water to save Lily. If he went in, it was to put her there and not pull her out. His intention was to silence her. He had a phone with him at all times. He was close to the main street, albeit late at night. He passed many houses. He did not try to get help. I find that she did not leave the alley of her own volition, but was forcibly taken to the mill pond by Lewis Haynes. Her body when recovered was naked from the waist up. Her skimpy top was found, slightly damp on vegetation near the mill pond. I hereby come to the conclusion she was not wearing that top when she went into the river. If she had been, it would have been completely saturated. I find it was removed from Lily against her will by Lewis Haynes while in the alley. To Lewis Haynes he said, You brutally murdered Lily Sullivan because you wanted sexual intercourse. To stop her doing so, you strangled her face to face. She must have been terrified, an 18-year-old girl, alone in the dark with a powerful man, entirely at your mercy, and you showed her absolutely none. You were only concerned about your self-preservation. He added, that Lily Sullivan's death had caused devastation to many. And because of the sexual element in the murder, the starting point for his sentence was life with a minimum of 30 years to be served in jail. But he gave Haynes a discount for pleading guilty and the fact that the murder was not premeditated. He also stated that Lewis had shown remorse. So the minimum term was changed to 23 years before he would be eligible to apply for parole. Lewis would be 55 by the time that he was eligible. As the sentence was passed down, one person in the public gallery shouted, Monster! And someone else shouted that the jail term was not long enough. The senior investigating officer on the case said, The violent and predatory actions of Lewis Haynes took the life of Lily. Haynes passed numerous opportunities to seek help for Lily 
when fleeing the scene of his crime. His selfish and cruel actions have changed the lives of all those who knew and loved Lily and the close-knit community of Pembroke. The life sentence handed down to Lewis Haynes today ensures that he will not be able to harm others in the community. This sentence is no consolation for Lily's family and friends, but I hope that this will be a step forward in the slow process of rebuilding their lives. Today, my thoughts are entirely with them. Lily's mother after sentencing called Lewis pure evil and said that she would never forgive him for what he has done. She stated, Overwhelmingly, I feel it's all so senseless. It didn't need to happen. What I can't come to terms with is that the man who killed Lily knew I was waiting for her and passed me by the garage. He chose not to help. He did nothing which I can't forgive. Statistics show that once every two minutes a woman is sexually violated, abused or attacked. And more often than not, the woman is blamed for it. Oh, why did you not do the right thing? Why did you not let the man down gently? Why did you act this way? Why did you lead him on? Why did you not dress more appropriately? Then this wouldn't have happened to you. These are the things that a woman has to hear when she went through one of the worst traumas that she would ever go through in her life. It is not a woman's responsibility to control how a man acts in a certain circumstance. No matter how she acted, a mere minute before, or how she is dressed, it doesn't matter why she said no, it is her right to say no if she doesn't want things to go further. It is a man's responsibility to understand that no means no, and under no circumstances should any woman worry that they would lose their life because they said no. So that is it for today's case you guys. Thank you so much again if you watched this video and if you have gotten this far. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comment section down below. Please remember to be kind, don't victim shame or blame. If you haven't subscribed, please do so and please remember to leave a like. It's a free way that you can help me out. I really hope you enjoyed this case. Please take care of yourself. Until next time. Bye.